What is going on? It's Alex coming back at you with another video. And today we're going to be breaking down the newest trade in the NFL. Matt Judon going to the New England Patriots for a third round pick. Now this video, we're going to be discussing the trade and its compensation, who won the trade. But most importantly, this is going to be developing into my deep dive series. I dropped my Patriots and my Falcons videos. So what we're going to be doing is evaluating the defenses on, and you guys can check out the other videos for looking at the offenses and the draft classes, but we're going to be modifying the records predictions that have already put been put in. It might not change drastically. Hint, hint. I love Matt Judon. He's going to add a game, lose a game here and there, but for both these teams, there's not very many super contentious games, but I think for the Falcons, we might be seeing some shifts there. So super excited for that. Again, we're going to be reviewing the rosters in terms of the defenses for both teams as well as revamping a records prediction. So that's all going to be encapsulated in this video. So stay tuned for that. If you are new, feel free to like, comment, subscribe, do this stuff all the time. Going to be getting content out pretty much every single day. So super excited for that. Use the link tree to get involved everywhere else. If you love the draft, you need to follow my Twitter because I post all 22 tape there all the time. And then that involves into content that I make in the analysis I put on this show. So super exciting there. We've got a couple, actually, we, we definitely have one confirmed, but we actually might have a second top tier interview coming in for guys who are in my top 32 overall. Super excited for that as well. Use that underdog fantasy link because I, they actually have it for the season for NCAA. They actually have like higher or lower and they're like really, really good. Like very like six out of the eight I chose. I'm pretty much guaranteed on. And that instantly gets my money back. So do it as soon as you can, because that's great. And then you get $250 in bonus cash up to when you use that link. So just go to Linktree, click that top link. It does all the work for you. Let's do it. Let's get right into this. Um, but speaking about this trade, a third round pick. So I think it's a win for both sides. Maybe I think New England could have squeezed out a second because Matt Judon is a damn, damn good player. He does not have a solidified contract in place. That might be one of the reasons why Atlanta doesn't have boatloads of cash to be giving because they gave boatloads of cash to Kirk. Now, I'm not saying like they're completely tapped out of cash. That's not true. But there's a certain point when you start putting too many dollars into too few places, the team could get a little bit uneasy in terms of the balance. So it is what it is. But I think it's great for Atlanta because they ended up taking their first pick and passing on a pass rusher to go for a quarterback to sit and develop in a time where I think they should be trying to win now. This move confirms that that's what they probably should have done. But Michael Penix, we're going to leave it as is. We're going to assume that that was the pick that should have been made. It wasn't, but it's still like at least they ended up getting their pass rusher. I still think they need to get a corner, but we'll talk about the defenses in a second. Are the Patriots again? Make has squeezed out that second round pick, but be happy for Matt. Honestly, respect to this organization. Matt deserves to be able to compete for a championship. He's a class act dude. I haven't really seen him be a genuine douche nozzle. He's been a leader on the team, and you guys did what's right for him. You're in a developing phase, and he wants a new contract. He wants to be able to compete for a Super Bowl, and you're also sending him to the NFC. So you're going to be giving him a great opportunity to try to compete for the NFC with a rising team. And he actually gets to be able to be in a situation that's best for him. And you guys get your developing capital with that third round pick because third round picks honestly matter so much more to these teams that are rebuilding because that's where you get your Caden Wallace that could end up being your star tackle of the future. Whereas a team that is ready to win now, that's kind of like depth in case of injury, which is still super crucial. But when you're talking about a true starter like Matt Judon, it works for both teams in terms of the vision. So super excited for that. Let's talk about the impact in terms of how this affects New England's defense. And it sucks because obviously going from um, Matt Judon to Anthony Jennings, it's not like Anthony Jennings is a bum. You guys signed him to a, what, a three-year contract at like $4 million a year. Like, it's not like he's an absolute bum here, but he is listed as the will linebacker per our lads at the moment. If things change, things change. However, you know, you have him for multiple years now and Anthony Denning is not a bum. You don't pay a bum $4 million a year. So it was certainly within the vision. They did their risk analysis and they brought him on in this past off season for this specific reason. So um, I don't think it massively hurts you i think it's still like it's obviously a vacancy you went from a b to a b minus but like you still have 
many, many, many pieces that can contribute. And if you want to see a full breakdown of the defense outside of the Matt Judon part that I just talked about, go to that original video where I actually broke down the draft class, the offense, the defense, and did the original records prediction. But um, this is solely to really focus on the Matt Judon part. But let's talk about the Falcons. So Falcons, by adding Matt Judon, technically he is listed above Arnold Ebiketti. You could add him to the rotation core. I boost you from a B plus to an A minus easily. I really like the edge core the way it is now compared to what it was. I think it is a massive boost. Not the biggest guy for Alford or Hughes in the long run, but I do like Clark Phillips being there. Not the biggest guy on Richie Grant either. DeMarco Hellum's on PUP at the moment. So, you know, I do have my concerns here and there. But when you're looking at this team holistically, their biggest gap was either corner or edge rusher. And they kind of work hand in hand. If you have a good pass rush, you help out the corners. You have good corners, you could also help out the pass rush. Um, so I think that it's more translatable to get a really solid pass rusher to help out the corners, especially when you got some talented corners like Clark Phillips sitting there who could play probably both nickel as well as boundary corner. So I uh, really do like the move. Like it's definitely going to improve the team. And let's see actually how this ends up translating. Again, if you guys want to see a full evaluation of the defense minus Matt Judon, go check out the video I dropped literally this week. <laughs> like perfect timing, right? But let's get on into it. Let's get that record records prediction going. Spoiler alert. We already have these records predictions in from my other videos. So I guess you didn't really need to see that part of those videos, but I still think the analysis is really much more in depth over there. This was just definitely focusing on the Matt Judon aspect of things. But the key is not we're going to go over game by game. The key is in the games where it is rolling the dice, are we able to flip some games here? That's the big key because you're not going to be losing games. We're going to be doing New England as well. Key for that as well, unfortunately. Uh, maybe I should have started out that way. So we ended on a high note with the Falcons, but you know, it is what it is. I started off with the Patriots. We'll end off with the Patriots too. Um, when it comes to week number six, you're coming off a mini buy. I really like Carolina. However, I do think this does make that type of impact. The offensive line, I don't trust for Carolina, especially now that Matt Judon's in the division. Do I think Matt Judon is like a top five edge rusher in the NFL? No, but I do think that it is a marginal increase that is enough to overwhelm uh, the Panthers here. So you will also be seeing the Panthers dropping to six and 11. So I like the Panthers, but I do have my issues. Charles Cross had some issues, man. I certainly believe that if he faces Matt Judon, especially Abe Lucas as well, both those guys have had their troubles. This could end up being flipped for a Falcons victory. I'll leave it as is, hoping that those tackles end up, well, Abe Lucas get healthy first. But uh, George Fant, theoretically, is better statistically. Keep that in mind. Um, if you guys can't tell, I was preparing to do a Seahawks video today. But um, I do think that this is a game that I will leave but it's certainly one that you could flip as well. Um, the Buccaneers, I'm going to leave it split. Uh, this is one of the teams that actually has a really good offensive line. It is certainly one where you can debate it, but I do think in division splitting is you know pretty normal, especially when you they still have actually a relatively solid offensive line. The offense isn't the problem with the Buccaneers. It's more so the defense that I have my concerns with. And I mean, I like the pieces on your defense. It's just not the same defense. Um, this game right here, it's flipped. Um, sorry, Broncos fans. I mean, you're dropped to three and 14, but I don't think you guys are going to say that's too crazy. It's just going to be one of those years. Um, and, you know, it sucks. It really does suck. But I think that's where it's at. Um, losing to the Raiders, I think that's fine. The Raiders are a gritty ass team, but I think I'm very comfortable leaving it as is. Leaving y'all 12 and five. I don't think that. Unfortunately, you are the quality of team that 12 and five, like truly suggest because you do have some easier opponents on in your own division. However, I do think this is a 10 to 11 win team in most divisions. That doesn't sound like a lot, but every game really does matter. And um, I feel like the schedule is relatively cake apart from a couple early games. So uh, very excited about that for you guys. But let's end off on a relatively more pessimistic note. Uh, the New England Patriots. You know, are there any games that we won that we will be flipping? Um, Miami and New England, they can they can joust at each other. I'm perfectly fine leaving that as is. Um, 
I don't think you're going to beat the Jets. I know I don't trust that. Um, I know this sounds crazy because you guys are probably like, what the hell? We're already three and 14, but I think I will be flipping that Jets game. I, it just, it doesn't make any sense. They have a top tier offensive line comparatively to your defensive line. Um, and to be fair, you guys actually don't have bad players, but the Jets are just a super powered team. They had to lose to somebody and like Matt Judon could have been the X factor there, but removing him, that just makes it very, very difficult. Um, I mean, theoretically, I'm definitely not changing this game. I was actually believing that I would flip it in your favor if this were pre-selected for the Cardinals, but I really like how that is. Um, honestly, I do think Buffalo the could be resting their starters in week 18. They could be. Um, for that reason, I actually like to lean for more optimism. I'm actually keeping your record the same and telling the Bills kind of the F off, but like we'll see what when all is said and done. The majority, like the most likely solution is that you're two and fifteen, but we're gonna leave it at three and fourteen. RNG does happen. It's just you guys got a lot of growing pains and you lost one of your main pieces on defense, especially your key veteran, new leadership, new quarterbacking, especially with Drake May, probably going to need some more development in the fact that you're not using him in the preseason. Like, hello. Like, like, dude, having the guy throw two screen passes is not going to get him ready for full contact and full speed. So hopefully um, those practices and maybe increased usage as the preseason goes on allows you to get a little bit more juice, but you have a tough ass schedule too. You really do. So that's going to be the video. I know it kind of sucks to end on that note. Let's end on the positive note. Let's, let's end on the positive note. Um, Falcons. We'll leave it there. Thank you so much for watching. Love y'all. See you on the far side.